Hello, welcome back to course how to build GraphQL server with NestJS. And uh, today we are going to see the demo of an app that we'll be building in the coming tutorials. Now let's go and see it before we can start building together. Now before we can see the demo, I was almost forgetting one thing that we need to have as a tool and uh, this is postman because we will be testing our end apis so make sure that you have it if you don't have it you just come to postman.com and uh, choose uh, your platform here if you're using windows you can just click this window icon and it will send you to the download past uh, postman according to your uh, operating system now this is one of the one of the best uh, tool for testing your endpoints and uh, you may wonder if we are using uh, GraphQL and uh, we all know that Postman is good for REST API. Why bothering download it? Uh, I will show you there are some part of our uh, GraphQL uh, API server will be accessed through uh, Postman and uh, you can even access the whole if you don't have uh, uh, you can also access the uh, GraphQL server using Postman. I will show you also that, but uh, let you have it if you don't have it because you may use it. And uh, if you're using Windows, sometime you need to have a good console emulator, and uh, one of them is Commander. So make sure that you have it. Come to command.net, and uh, this is a software package created out of pure frustration of the existence of nice console emulator for Windows. So if you're using Windows, Make sure that you have it. It's an option, but you can come here and download it and install it. It's one of the best uh, console emulator for Windows. It has all the features, Linux, and uh, all distribution that it has, it, which is nice to have as a Windows. So these are the two little gotcha that I was almost forgotten at the moment. I was telling you about the tools which are necessary. So make sure that you have this before we can proceed because we might use them in the future. So let's go straight to the demonstration. And uh, I have several tabs here opened, and uh, all these tabs are for different queries. And uh, as I've just said, you are going to create a contact managers and uh, s application that will be storing our contract. So here I have one tab for managing contracts, and I'm going to show you. And uh, if you click here, you will find these different queries. One for getting all public contracts. Another one for creating contracts, contract two, contract three, and uh, for getting my contracts and getting a single contract. And uh, I've categorized them contracts, ones which are public and not which are not public. So if you want to make your contract public, there is this one for making a contract public for updating uh, contract and delete contract. So this is very simple an application that will be creating together and uh, at the end, once we finish this, you will be able to create any GraphQL application because the same principles will be applied here. So as you can see, I've tried to uh, modularize some response here by creating this fragment. And I call this fragment contact period. And uh, before I can proceed, uh, let's go to this doc. And as you can see, there is a list of queries here and uh, mutations. So let's get into demonstrations. Now let's get all public contract. And as this all public contract is public means that no one is needed to log in to access it. And unless you try to access it by clicking this get all public contract. Now at the moment to click it, there is no any public contract so far. Now let's go and create one. I'll let you come here. It's, as you can see, straightforward. We just pass in the phone number and then we get this uh, payload here. So let's go and click it. Now, once you click it, you'll find is invalid users. This endpoint is secured, means that you need to log in to access it. So, how are we going to log in it? Remember, I have a one super admin. So, let's go and log in. If you remember, I told you that you are going to use uh, this postman and uh, this is where we are going to authenticate users but if 
there are many ways to do it. You can create a login uh, GraphQL endpoint here, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to uh, create a restful endpoint for that. So you can still uh, create end, a restful endpoint for login, or you can still do it within a GraphQL server. For our case, I've just separated it so as a uh, login authentication endpoint uh, REST API and the other endpoint uh, GraphQL APIs. And uh, most of the times you find this way is nice, especially when you implement a front end uh, applications using GraphQL APIs. So if you have worked with uh, REST, uh, Postman, you can see straightforward. You just have to provide your URL here as a method post and the body is a JSON. So as you can see, it's the same server that we use here to access our GraphQL endpoint. As you can see, it's port, uh, the same port here, we access it. It's the same port that we are using here. But I've separated these two endpoints, this for authentication and this one for other issues. Now let's go and now try to authenticate with a long password here and see what we are happening as you can see it says that invite user unauthorized and we are going to do this next js support also rest api don't worry and we are going to do what we can do with that so let's go and provide the correct password here and see what you're going to get we are going to get this token it's a jwt token this will allow us to uh, access our graphql endpoint now Take this real quick and let you go back to our playground and try to access using this token. Now, if you wonder how to access it, I will show you there are these, these two tabs here. We cannot see it. Let me show you that you can see them. Now, you can see these two tabs. You can just have to drag them here. And uh, here as well, is this for query variables? Is this for HP headers? Now let's go and add this as headers. This authorization header, authorization, and Isabella token. Now let's paste our token. Now let's go and uh, perform create contract. As you can see, we managed to create this contract. And uh, we can create another contract also, contract number two. If you scroll here, you can see if, for instance, if you repeat, you see, it say that the contract exists. Nice. Now it's good to provide second uh, contract. And uh, we can even create a said contract here. And a uh, said contract exists, I think. I think we should uh, change. And uh, let you create again. Now you can get. So once you hit this, get my contract. You get your contracts here, and uh, you can even get a single contract. Let you navigate to this. Get single contract. Let's we want to get this. Now, as you can see, we are not returning ID number, and I will tell you why during the course. For security matters, I don't, I don't always expose your uh, ID. You can use this your ID for that matter, so as you cannot expose your ID. Someone may use it to to use for hacking purpose. So make sure that you don't return that one. That's why I'm returning this your ID, and I will show you how to do this. So let you come here and paste it here, and I let you query a single. So you can query a single result here and uh, you can now make your contract. Let's say I'm going to make this as a public. Now take this and uh, let you make public. Okay. Now let you make this contract public. This is one of the features. Now let's go and qu query all public contract and we'll find this one. Now there are many things like updating contract where you are going to pass uh, an ID here and uh, as one for delete. Okay. Now this is a super admin administration who has got all the laws 
who can do all the stuff. Now let's go and create another user and uh, try to creating it. Okay. Now let you come here real quick. Now let's go and access all contract. Let's go to another tab. This is for administrator and let's go and log. And you can see this one is not logging, so you can borrow some uh, authentications here. This is how to authenticate user, and we are going to learn this. Don't worry. So just come here and uh, let you paste and let you get all contract. Now, as you can see, you can get all contract. Now, this is for administrator. Now, let's go to create a law. So we need to create a law so as we can attach that law to a user. Now, as you can see, this is a fragment. We try to create this fragment and I'll let you get all roles here now if you get all roles you are not authenticated now come here and authenticate remember that we have already created this token and I've set this token to last long but in production don't do that make sure that it takes more time left span so as it can be requested again now for the demonstrations I made this to be long so as we can understand our what you're going to learn now I pasted this here and I'll let you now get it now you can see there is this admin the one which has been there and it has got all the permissions now let you come here and uh, create a new we're going to create this one normal user permission lol lol so let's come here and create a lol here and uh, from that law we can get all permissions these are the permissions and we are going to see how we can use this one now let's go and assign some permission i think you should assign uh one permission for creating a contract now let's find here role create contract if you can find it let's say contract real quick now one for create contract here it is. Okay, let's you want to create contract. Create. There should be one for create contract. Let me come. Now we have this for create contract. You can take this. Okay. And I'll let you assign this create contract now as you can see assigning permission to role you just pass it a certain law id uid and uh, this permission id now let's come here and pass this one and i'll let you find for another one for viewing a uh, contract view contract the click now here it is now we can take this also uid remember that i've used uid not id and never expose your id here little quick now take this first and uh paste it here let me show you what i'm trying to say what i'm trying to say is that and i'm taking the id of uh, my let me get first all my laws i'm taking this id for normal person user and i'm going to assign it here so let me explain what I'm um, uh, assign this law, these two permissions. Remember that I'm using UID, UID of these normal users, one for creating contract and another one for viewing it. Now, these are the two laws that I'm going to create for this normal user, and I'm going to assign this to uh, user I'm going to create soon. Now, let's go and create this assigning. And as you can see, I've already assigned it. Now, let's move to users. Now let you get all users first. Need to authenticate a little quick. Now let's take this and I'm passing it here. And authenticate and let you find all users. As you can see, we have one just admin. Now let's go and create another users. This time I'm going to create SUS. So as you can see, this one here. I'm going to create SUS create first user source password mismatch let me go as you can see let me go put here password write password and I'll let you create again 
and as you can see I've made to create this if I get all users you can see I have this admin and I have this source now I'm going to assign source this role that I've created here normal users now let you come to here I'm going to take the ID of source your ID of source and I'm going to put it here and uh, if you remember I can also take your ID of normal user and assign it here so let me put five and I'll let you come here and I'll explain to you so I'm going to give us uh, permission I mean roles of normal user and normal user has got two permissions who can create contract and I can uh, view contract okay now let you come here and uh, uh, assign it okay now assign to user one here and uh, as you can see Su Susan is assigning this role so let you come and log in as Susan so as we can create it again now let's go back to our here and uh, we are going to log in as Susan if you remember we say Sus and the Sus 2021 now let's get it and uh, user is inactive so let's go and deactivate by default if you create user user it not is not active now let's go back to admin and the active, activate this user okay now we can take UAD of uh, okay UAD of uh, Susan this one and let you activating ah now let's go back to activation and passing that UAD here and let you activate use is activated now we can log in here go back and you can see we can now log in okay now this is nice features and we are going to learn this all don't worry so let's take this and let you go back to our playground and try to use this token to create mm -hmm. remember Suze has got two rows she can view a contract and she can create contract the rest of the permissions she cannot perform let's go and see if she can create okay go back to this first tab and if you remember this was token for administrator now just take this out and replace with the new one that we have just created now let's come here and uh, first get all public contract this remember is a public and public endpoint you can still perform and uh, let you create now because she has got a law she can create now let go back a little quick here and uh, change her because this doesn't exist and I'll let you create it here and you can you can see this contract is created by SUS now if we try to get my contract remember SUS has got a law to view contract but this is uh, co this permissions for view my contract so she doesn't have a permission to view a contact let's go and see as you can see she has got access denied now she can't even she can view single she doesn't have a permission but she cannot even view all uh, here let's go and see if she can view all okay, let you come and take this token a bit tedious and I'll let you put here to see if she can see how the contract okay you can see yeah she can view all contract because we provide her with a permission now as you can see this is straightforward and we, this contract has got a uh, security whoever doesn't have a permission of so doing certain thing she cannot do anything so there is a lot of things that you're going to learn it and it's time we run out of time but we reperform the rest of our uh, actions at the time we are building this we learn how to secure our endpoint whoever who doesn't have access she cannot access now before i can end this demo i've told you that we can still use a uh, postman to even access our our graphql endpoint now it's okay if you come here real quick and I'll let you remove this here 
and you put GraphQL. Remember, this is the way you, you access GraphQ, Graph QL. Then here is where we put our uh, quell. Okay. Now let's go and perform it. Yeah, because uh, we are using this public, so I've just pasted it here and uh, put GraphQL endpoint and make sure that it's post and it send a request. And as you can see here, we got this request here. Now it's straightforward. You can still use Postman to perform GraphQL query. If you don't want to use this playground here, you can still do all the stuff. Okay. I hope this demo is very long. And uh, don't worry, we are going to build this together using SDJS. Straightforward and easy and we really find this enjoyable. And all these things will make sense at the end of this course. So I hope we are together. Don't worry, next, next time when we start to implement this. From the coming videos, we will start doing code. We will not talk. I think the talk is enough. So we will start building this GraphQL server and we will test it together. So till next time, I wish you all the best. Bye bye.